Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Mr. Zurius and today our Blockbench for Noobs tutorial will be covering Mob Variants. A Mob Variant is a mob that looks different depending on the properties file that you have set for it. Now you can do a lot with these, they're quite powerful. You can set a mob to spawn only in specific biomes, specific heights, when given a specific name, you can even make it spawn depending on the weather or the time of day. There's, there's lots and lots of different things. So what I thought I'd do is first and foremost, I would jump into the game and show you an example of this in action. So here we are, we're inside Minecraft and I'm standing on the edge of two biomes here. I'm just going to press F3 and bring up the handy screen here. You can see on the left where it says biome, we're currently in the snowy tundra. If I go over here, we're now in the plains. I have my creeper spawn egg. Nothing special about it, just a standard creeper spawn egg. And I'm going to spawn one over here in the snowy tundra. Ooh, fancy blue ice creeper. Okay, what if I spawn one in the plains? Oh, we've got this weird, dirty looking creeper. Interesting. Just spawn a few more between these two biomes. You see that it changes instantly when I'm going between the two. And there you have it. That is essentially what a mob variant is. It just changes the texture based on the properties that you've set. So how exactly do you accomplish this? Well, let's go back to Windows. So here's my resource pack. You'll see up here I've got in the resource packs folder. I've just called it Mr. Zurius Creepers Tutorial. We're going to go down into Assets, Minecraft, Optifine, Random, Entity, Creeper. And here we have all of my Creeper skins that I've made. You'll note that it starts at two rather than one. That's because the designation of Creeper 1 is just the default creeper, so we don't need to put that in here. So how do you actually tell the game to spawn these different types of creepers? Well, that's where this properties file comes in handy. So here's the properties file that's being used in my game right now. Before I start explaining what things are, I should point out any line that starts with the hashtag means it's a comment, which means it will not be read by the file. These ones here are just notes of my textures. So number one, as I said, is default. Number two is blue ice, which you can see here. Diamond, dark, gold, granite, etc, etc. Now this is where we actually start changing things. So this is just a heading here. Notice the hashtag for the comma. Now here's what we want to do. So as I said, the default starts at 1. So we're just going to go straight to skins 2. And you want to format it just like this. So it says skins.2. And then equals 2. So what does this actually mean? Okay, so skins or textures if you like tells the properties file that we're going to be designating a skin variant. In this case, that variant is number two, and the variant is tied to texture two. The variant number here two does not have to match the texture number. As you can see down here for skins three, I've got three, five, and seven. So we're simply saying skin variant two is texture two. So we've got biomes, and then we have the designation of two. That tells it that this list here of number two is linked to skin variant 2. So whenever you want to match up some property settings to a particular variant, you have to make sure that this number here matches. So skins variant 2, biomes variant 2. So now what we're saying is the variant for skins 2, which is the blue ice creeper, should only appear in this list of biomes. And if I just bring up another tab here, you'll see that I've already got the list of all the biomes right here. Now, don't worry if I'm already getting ahead of you and you're not sure what's happening. I will include all of these files in the download pack so you can have a look at it, play around with it, change it and do what you like. I just thought I would grab this list of biomes as it's very helpful to have handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of this here, all this extra stuff that we'll get to in a little bit. I'm just going to create a new tab here and just dump it in there for now. And this is our creeper properties file. I'm just going to save this, having removed all the other properties, and I'm going to go back into the game. Right, so here we are back in game at the exact same spot. Before we continue, what I would say is make sure you go into your options and resource packs, and make sure you actually have your pack turned on. You'll see that I've got my Mysterious Creeper tutorial here, and I'm going to just spawn in our Creeper. Excellent, so we've still got the Ice Creeper, but if we spawn one outside of a snowy plane, it's just a normal Creeper. I just spam this a little bit more, you'll see it's nothing but the normal texture. Back to the snowy biome and spawn a bunch of ice creepers. You with me so far? So to recap what I've just gone over, skin variant 2, which is linked to creeper texture 2, which is this blue ice one right here. If when spawning a creeper, it's in one of these biomes, it will use this variant and this texture. Question is though is why did we see a really strange dirty looking one as well earlier? So if I just put my settings back the way they were, 
we'll have a look and see what these other ones are. So you'll see I've got some comments here. So skin variant three, rather than it just being skins three equals three, which would be diamond, we have skins variant three here, which equals three, five, and seven, which as you can tell from this comment is diamond, gold, and lapis. And rather than having a biome list, we have a new properties option here. Heights, and just like the skins, we have heights three because it matches the skin variant three equals 0 to 20. There's a good chance that you've already caught up with what's going on here, but let's go back in game and I'll show you how this works. Right, so here we are back in game, and if you look at the XYZ coordinates on the top left there, you'll see that our Y coordinate is 11. Let's see what happens if I spawn a creeper. Oh wow, it's, why is it a normal creeper? Well, that's because I didn't reload my pack. And quick reload and you'll see that we've suddenly got diamond and lapis creepers. I just spam this a bit more, we'll see we get nothing but Gold, diamond, and lapis creepers all over the place. And that's because we're now meeting this requirement here of if the height is between Y level 0 and 20, use these skins here, the diamond, gold, and lapis skins. So back in Notepad++, what we're going to look at now is the properties master file. Now this is the one provided by the guys at Optifine that shows you how the random features work. I'll put a link to this in the description for you, but it's really good to have a copy of this somewhere so you can use it as a reference. You'll see here that it explains the texture index, which is where this N is. You see it's either textures or skins. I like to use skins. We have it as skins too, which would be the index here or the variant, as long as you have an understanding of what this number means here. It doesn't matter what you call it really. You have the list of biomes, height ranges, entity name, there's lots and lots of different things in here. There's a lot of things in this properties file to cover, but I'm not going to cover all of it in this video because you really have to decide what you want to get out of this. For example, if you wanted, you could do matches based on professions of villagers and their levels. So if you wanted to have different skins for every single level of every single profession of a villager, that is entirely possible. But I will definitely not be doing that because that is a lot of work. You can see there's lots of other options in here as well, time of day, weather, moon phase if you wanted. But the one we're going to look at next is the one called weights. So let's go over how weights work. So let's have a look at this granite one right here and we'll explain how this works. So the designation is five and the textures we're using are number six and one. Six, of course, being granite, and one being the default. So what we're telling the game to do is when the height is between 30 and 40 or 1430 to spawn a granite creeper. But we have an additional parameter down here of weights. Now, how does weights work? Probably easier if I grab this here and put it between the skins and the heights. You're setting a weight for each one of these textures. The weight of skin six, which is the granite one, is one. The weight of skin one, being the default, is five. But Mr. X, what does that even mean? Well, for this, we're gonna have to do a bit of maths. I know, scary. So here's how we calculate how often these will spawn. The weight of skin six is one. So let's write that down. We then want to divide it by the total of all of the weights, which in this case is six. We then want to multiply it by a hundred. And what I'm just going to do is bring up our trusty Windows calculator. So let's just do one divided by six times 100. So we have a percentage chance of 16.6. So skin six has a 16% chance of being used between the heights of 40 and 30. And let's just do the same for the other one. So we have five, which is the weight of the skin, divided by the total six times 100. Let's just clear this. Five divided by six times 100. And we have 83.3. So skin one equals 83.3. And if we add these two together, you'll see that they roughly get to 100%. So if I just go back to our calculation here for skin six, multiply it by five, we get 83.3. So essentially what this means is that skin one is five times more likely to appear than skin six. But enough of this maths, let's jump in game and see how this actually works. Right, here we are back in game on Y level 35, which is right in the sweet spot between these two. So let's click. Okay, default. Let's click on R a couple of times. There we go, there's a the granite. Lots of granite, wow, that's very lucky. So if I click lots and lots of times, we should see that the default creeper uh, shows up a lot more often than the granite keep creeper. Now the default one will show up a lot more often than the granite creeper because it is five times more likely to spawn. And that's how the weights work. 
So back in the properties file now, you'll see that we've got a bunch of blank ones down here. Mycelium, sand and stone. I'm not going to fill these in. The reason why I've left these blank is for a little exercise for you guys if you want to try and do this yourself. All of the textures already exist in the resource pack, so we've got mycelium, sand, stone. And there's this TNT one. Now this is the final one we're going to look at today before the end of the video because we're going to do something a little bit different with this one. So for the TNT texture, what we're going to do is we're going to force this texture onto a creeper when it's renamed. Now you see that I've changed the config around a little bit here. We've now got the TNT up here and we've re-indexed it to skin 2. Now the reason I've done this is the properties file being read from top to bottom means that if it was to read all of this information here about all these creepers, it would then read the TNT one last. So if I was to try and apply the TNT tag to any of these ones here, it just would not work. So for this reason, if you want to change the texture of a mob based on its name, I would advise that you put it at the top of your index. So let's just go over this so we know what we're doing. So the index up here is now 2 for TNT, which goes to texture 11. And what we've got here is eye pattern TNT. Now, if you look over here, what I've done is I've used this parameter right here. So essentially eye pattern, what this means is I can take a name tag and name it TNT, or it can be TNT or TNT or any other variation of uppercase and lowercase will work. Now I guess the last thing we need to do is jump back into the game and see it working. Right, here we go, back in game. Let's spawn some creepers. So I've got a bunch of ice creepers here and if I just start renaming them, boom, TNT texture. Let's try a different name tag with a capitalized letter or two. Works exactly the same and all capitals, boom. Perfect. So what would happen if you had the index of the TNT texture would be that when renaming this blue ice creeper, nothing would happen because this would be above this texture in the config file. Hopefully that makes sense. And here's a bunch of normal creepers. Let's just give these guys some TNT tags. And there you go, last one. Now the next tutorial in this series is going to be quite complex and the information in this tutorial is 100% essential before you move on to that. So in a couple of days or so, I'm going to show you how to make zombies like this. Now, not specifically Christmas zombies because these are part of my Christmas pack, but you'll see that these zombies have extra parts added onto them. So we've got tops of presents here and different limbs. So as I said, the process that we're going to be looking at in a couple of days is quite complicated. So it's essential that you learn how the random properties work and how to change mob variant textures. And then we'll look into making a bit more complicated stuff in a couple of days. Hopefully now you guys have a good understanding of mob variants and their textures. I really hope you put this information to good use and you found it helpful. So with all that being said, everyone, I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, excuse me, zombie. I'm trying to do an outro here. Root. As I said, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you would do me a favour, just hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 200 subs. It's so close. I think when I last checked, I only need nine more subscribers. So let's get me to 200. So I'll be back in a couple of days with another tutorial for you guys. If you would like me to do a specific tutorial on something you want to learn how to do, please leave a comment or join the Discord and I'll see you there. So thank you so much for watching and have a good one.